Um, just like to welcome you all to our Clayton Board of Zoning Appeals, and I'd like to um, bring this meeting to order on November 1st, 2022 at 7 p.m. Um, I'm first going to start out with just a quick um, note to everyone that we just learned from staff that Ms. Byers has resigned from this board, so um, she will no longer be, um, be here. So we are looking for a fifth person. So um, that being said, let's go ahead and do roll call. Ms. Weeks? Here. Mr. McGinnis? Here. Ms. Hunter? Here. And Mr. Madewell? Here. Okay, thanks. Um, I'm just going to do a quick explanation of what our meeting will involve tonight. Um, so what we're going to start out with is uh, we will do, um, we will administer an oath this evening uh, for any staff and members of the public who wish to speak on any agenda items. I'll do that in a moment. Um, then we'll also, then we'll go through all of the agenda items that we have tonight. Um, I will make a quick note that we, um, one of them is our meeting minutes and we'll go ahead and prove a we should be able to improve all of them since everyone is here this evening. Um, even the ones that Ms. Byers was attending, we will go ahead and approve those this evening as well. Um, so after we go through that, we will then go through our new business, which is um, our case, and we just have one this evening. And when we go through that, we will start with having the uh, staff go ahead and present the case to us. And at that point, then we will allow the um, applicant to come on up and give any other additional comments they would like to say. And then we will open it for public comment. And then we'll close for public comment at that point and just have any other further discussions among board members. And then we will go through a findings of fact. And then we will vote on the case. And that will be our evening. Okay. So at this time, let's go ahead and administer an oath. So please stand and raise your right hand if you, will, if you will be speaking this evening. Do you solemnly swear to or affirm that the testimony you are about to give to this board is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? If so, then please say, I do. I do. Okay, thank you. Okay, as I mentioned before, our first um, agenda item tonight will be going through our previous uh, meeting minutes, and we're going to approve those. We are, we have four of them tonight, and um, if you do, we do have a nice little grid provided for us on who can vote on, on which ones who were, who were there and who were not. So if um, Ms. Byers was on here for a couple of these, obviously she won't be here, so we will just approve those based on the two people who were here for those meetings. Does that make sense to everybody? So... Um, so let's go through, we'll start with uh, the approval of the minutes for April 5th, 2022. And at this time, do we have any comments on the April 5th meeting minutes? Everybody's good with those? Okay. Uh, so we'll go through, um, let's approve those. And I guess we will go through a roll call at this point. To, do, do, we need a, do we need a motion on those? Or? Okay. We will do a motion on those first. I move, Mo sorry, I move to approve the minutes from April 5th. I second. Okay, let's do a roll call. Ms. Weeks? We'll abstain. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Hunter? Yes. Mr. Madewell? Yes. Okay, the second meeting minutes we need to approve are from June 7th, 2022. And again, are there any comments or changes or additions we need done to these minutes? Okay, do I hear a motion on those? I'll make a motion. I'll second. Okay, roll call please. Ms. Weeks? Abstain. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Hunter? Abstain. Mr. Maywell? Yes. Okay, the next meeting minutes to approve are from August 2nd, 2022. Do I hear any comments or changes on that one? I know I was good with those, so I was here, but anybody else? I move we approve the minutes of uh, 2nd of August, 2022. Second. Okay, roll call. Ms. Weeks? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Hunter? Yes. Mr. Meepa? Yes. Okay, and then the final meeting minutes, and then we should be all caught up, will be for October 4th, 2022. 
And again, any other, any questions or comments on that one? Okay, I'm good on that one. Do I have a motion on that? Move to approve the minutes of October 4th, 2022. I'll second. Okay, uh, roll call. Ms. Weeks? Yes. Mr. McInnes? Yes. Ms. Hunter? Yes. Mr. Maywell? I'm gonna ask a question. Should I have abstained on that first one since I wasn't here? Is that what I was supposed to do on that first Correct, vote? that first meeting you were not okay. here, so you did abstain, that was okay, correct. Then, then I'll abstain on this. Yeah. Okay, I think we are good on the meeting minutes at this point. Uh, we don't have any old business, so we'll move on to the new business. Uh, so the tonight we have case VAR 22-13 at 9301 North Main Street. It is a request for variances from Main Street District and from generally applicable standards for the proposed parking lot for medical office use. Application was made by Sushil Kakti, MD, property owner. I apologize if I mess up the name. <laughs> At this time, we will have staff present. Thank you, Chair Weeks. Good evening, board members. Uh, the variance application was submitted by the applicant, Dr. Sushil Kadki, on October 7th, 2022. And I do apologize throughout the materials. I kept putting an H in front of her name, um, or at the beginning of her name. It is S-U-S-H-E-E-L, for the record. Uh, the subject of the request is a 12-space parking lot and associated screening proposed for medical office use. The property is located at 9301 North Main Street. It's the northwest corner of North Main Street and Hillgrove Avenue, across the street from the Meyer Shopping Center. Parcel ID is M6016417-0030. The property has an area of 0 0.32 acres. The property is zoned MSD Main Street District. A public notice was printed in the Brookville Star on October 19th, 2022, and letters were mailed to the property owners within 300 feet of the applicant's property, also on um, October 17th, 2022. Uh, this is the surrounding area. Um, so the property, the subject property is highlighted with a blue dot. Um, you can see the properties east and north of this location. Um, are actually in the city of Inglewood, so the Meyer Shopping Center, the Meyer to the north, all of the houses, and you can kind of see the densely packed houses along Hillgrove and, and that subdivision um, are in the city of Clayton. Uh, the first couple rows uh, from Main Street are zoned MSD, and then as you get back further into the subdivision, uh, it reverts to the RSD, residential single unit district zoning. So again, look close up of the subject property. This aerial is from 2019. Not a lot really has changed from uh, that aerial image, uh, but that is the subject property. The applicant is proposing to improve the property with 12 space, uh, 12 space parking lot and screening for again for medical office use. The use will be consultation and counseling as well as the disability evaluation of veterans. The office space will have six examination consultation rooms within the existing structure. The plan provides a concrete walk extending uh, from the North Main Street public sidewalk onto the applicant's property. And from there, a striped crosswalk would take um, potential patients across the proposed parking lot to the entry of the proposed medical office. So this would help improve access for patients that may be getting to the office either by walking or via the regional transit system. Uh, the applicant was not required to do that, but is doing that. Um, that is a method that she could use to get a reduction in parking, but she still would like the 12 parking spaces. So uh, screening proposed includes a six foot tall privacy fence extending into the, um, and I put in quotes, front yard along Hillgrove Avenue and a three foot tall wrought iron or aluminum fence along the frontages of both Hillgrove and Main. And, and that's to surround the parking area. Layout of the parking lot will be one way, so moving counterclockwise from the entrance on Hillgrove Avenue and around the building, the parking distribution includes five angled parking spaces along the Hillgrove Avenue frontage, which does include one handicap accessible space. There'll be two parallel parking spaces along the Main Street frontage of the building. Uh, there will be three, and that's a correction from the staff report I, I indicated four. I kept seeing four on the plan, um, but it's actually three. 
additional angle parking spaces along the rear of the property, and that's the north side of the building. And then two perpendicular or 90 degree parking spaces would be along the west side of the building. And so the drive aisle that navigates the, the site will be 18 feet wide. It's again one way um, as it navigates through into and through and, and out of the site. Uh, summary of the variances requested. So there are three tonight. Um, section 1111.15E1, that's the Main Street District Standards. Within that table, uh, it indicates that parking is permitted inside and rear yards. Uh, given some definitions that I've elaborated in the staff report from the Planning and Zoning Code uh, for lot line front, lot line side, and yard front, the Hillgrove Avenue frontage is actually considered the front yard and uh, therefore those five parking spaces proposed along Hillgrove, Ave Hillgrove Avenue require a variance because they'd be in, in effect in the front yard. Uh, section 1121.06A1, 5A2, uh, which is our parking standards, and this comes from the standards for, that are generally applicable to non-single family uses. Perpendicular 90 degree parking spaces require a 20 foot, 24 foot wide drive aisle to serve that type of parking space and to provide two-way traffic flow. I think the intent of the code there is uh, if you have two bays and a parking lot, a commercial parking lot, you want 24 feet two-way traffic in between the two bays. It doesn't really take into account this situation where you've got a one-way flow of traffic. Um, so in, in any case, those two perpendicular spaces would require a variance due to um, the 18-foot wide one-way drive aisle and, and also having one-way traffic. So. Uh, section 1121.06, uh, I believe that's a 1 or an I. I think that's I3B for fences. Uh, fences in the front yard shall not exceed 4 feet in height, shall be no more than 50% opaque, and shall have a decorative design. So the proposed fence on the west side extending into the front yard on Hillgrove Avenue will be 6 feet tall, will be non-decorative, and will be more than 50%, uh, will have more than 50% opacity, and therefore requires a variance as well. Moving into the site plan, the, again, you have the full size page in your packets. Um, it kind of shows you the layout and the, the different parking spaces that I described earlier. Uh, and there's some site photos, um, kind of of the frontage of the building along Hillgrove. And I worked my way around the building to the backyard, it kind of abuts the um, uh, McDonald's area in, in uh, Inglewood and then back toward the front you can kind of see in some of the pictures the the Meyer Shopping Center and and some of the crossings on Main Street and then kind of back to the front looking across from the other side of Hillgrove back to the property and uh, so after review and consideration of the variance application staff would recommend that the Board of Zoning Appeals approve the variances requested as submitted that's all I have. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. And for our discussion, I'll go ahead and leave up the site plan. I have one question. Mm -hmm. um, is there any similar businesses or properties in this area that, that it takes into this type of account? Or is this just very unique to, is there anything similar to this, I guess? That we yeah, so I, I think as you go along Main Street in the city of Clayton, it's probably not unique to Clayton. There's probably some in Inglewood and certainly in Harrison Township as you go along. Um, there are old residences. People used to live on Main and, and through time they've been converted into commercial uses, insurance offices, tax, you know, uh, tax offices and uh, child cares and things like that. And so uh, these lots, especially in the front row of Main are very, uh, not very deep, so there isn't a lot that you can do with it. This lot in itself is less than half an acre, uh, but it does have that the ability to be a commercial lot. So I, th I think you, you'll find a number of similar circumstances. This is probably about the only layout they can really do to get those parking spaces, from what I can tell. Yeah, I think, I think in trying to meet the code standard, and, and um, the applicant has indicated that she would like to have all 12 of those spaces, believes that she'll be using um, those spaces. It really um, ends up being the, the best layout for, for that size lot. Thanks. You're welcome. 
Um, I got a couple of questions, clarifications, really, yeah. Mr. Dorman. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, the first one deals with the MSD district. That that is the Main Street district, of course, that deals with the development of the Main Street corridor. And you, as you indicated, you know, two houses or two uh, A Street anyway back is is where the uh, where that zoning is in effect. So this lot obviously falls into into this uh, this area. The purpose of these lots and that zoning is to support the uh, the Premier North complex, which is very close. Um, you know, and we've gotten uh, not just uh, tax people, but also medical type of support groups and everything else that's going in that, down in that area right. too. So I certainly see this uh, application as being consistent with, uh, with that de proposed development of the MSD. Is that correct? I think so. I mean, I think especially as you start north around Meyer, working your way to the hospital, and then a little bit south of the hospital, you see a number of um, not only medical offices, but um, I mean, there's also a veterinarian. So I, th I think that definitely in this section of Maine, there, there's a lot more healthcare related um, uses. Yeah, that makes sense, and, and I think there's some rehabilitation type of facilities down there, so forth and so on. So, you know, again, I, I see this as being consistent with that type of development. So, the, you know, I wanted to just get that on the record. Um, the second question I had deals with the, the lot itself. Um, I used to live in one of these lots, too. Okay. You know, my, my small area was facing Summer Suite. My big, long area where the house was oriented was facing Berkwood, Brian explained to me years ago, Mr. Elkins, that uh, if, you know, according to this, Bob, you know, you, your front yard is really, you know, pointing towards summer suite, you know, because it's the smaller. So it's the technical definition as opposed to the actual placement of the house and the postal code. Um, that to me kind of presents a problem because now we're, we're talking about a variance in the side yard of the, you know, so forth and so on which by reason says, because of the placement of the house, because of the postal code, the address, and that kind of good stuff, you know, is contradictory, if you will, or contrary to the uh, technical definition that we have in our code. I understand that. I'm wondering if we could think about that, and if these cases come up in the future, we may want to consider looking at corner lots a little bit special and and trying to adjust or make an adjustment in the code for that type of arrangement um, you know I understand perfectly where this is coming from you know because I, I used to live a lot like that you know and every time I thought about it you know it just kind of you know boggles the mind I think JQ public though anybody uninitiated with the zoning code wouldn't think about that at all all they'd look at is, oh, this is a pretty nice lot. You know, I can do something with this, and they go ahead and they purchase it, not thinking that technically it may not, it may be non-conforming, if you will, with the conditions that may apply to variances or usage of that particular home or that particular property, and that includes placement of outbuildings, so forth and so on, because your back lot line is now reversed to where you might be thinking about it. Again, you know, inconsistent. Just something that I kind of wanted to throw at you a little bit and make you think about. And uh, no, no action, but maybe something that we could we could do and pursue in the future. Yeah. Well, no, I I agree with you. Corner lots are very hard from a zoning standpoint. I've talked with our development director Jack Kuntz about corner lots. Um, we we both recognize kind of that. <laughs> difficulty in how you define the yards and and so we've come up with we've talked about a way from a jurisdiction that he used to work for how they handled the, the corner lots and I think we're gonna propose that to council uh, first of the year well that'd be great I, I appreciate that I, I just kind of wanted to bring that up because in this case it kind of really was obvious when I was reading through the application and the variances and everything, and I said, wow, you know, if only we could ordinate that, you know, 90 <laughs> degrees, everything would kind of go away yeah. in a lot of cases. So. Well, especially as you look at that existing building, the front door is facing Main Street. Yeah. And that's the thing, you know, if your house is facing Main Street, your postal code says Main Street, yeah. and then, you know, we come in here and, oh, well, no, 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 your front, your, your front yard's over yep. here, you know, it, it's kind of... It's inconsistent with, with what we might think. And, and corner lots are notorious for that. Yeah, yeah, they're not intuitive at all. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that clarification too, thank you. 
a quick question, Seth. I, mm -hmm. I, I was curious. I just actually drove by there and, and looked at that. And there's another house across from there on, for sale, I think, uh, across mm -hmm. Hill Grove. Yeah. Is this going to this gonna be an ongoing, you think, issue of people de developing? And uh, is there some consistency? Yeah, so they yeah. they have to I'm, keep applying it for variances? And potentially things? so. I think if, if folks are buying the single lot um, and, and using what's there or, or what have you, um, that will continue to be an issue, I think. To get a true redevelopment down there, folks would have to buy maybe the first and second row lots, combine them together, and then, and then I think maybe they can meet code standards. But yeah, I think you will continue to see that. I mean, the, this reworking of how we treat corner lots may help, at least with the corner lots, but the, the front row on Main, they're just very small lots, typically. Yeah, and I think that was part of the consideration that people were discussing when we were talking about the uh, MSD district there, you know, because those lots are very tight, but nevertheless, they can be developed and they're prime for development, you know, along those lines, so. I just had a quick verification on the, the third variance, the one with the, the fence. So th that would only be for the section that's kind of, if you look at the drawing we have here on the bottom to the right there where it says proposed fencing because that's technically the front yard. Is that what we're talking about? That's the only that's the only part that's out of that would be in the variance. Yeah, yeah. So right? everything so, else is within code that they're right, proposing. Yeah. So you, using our definition, it's this new section of privacy fencing, which will be six feet tall and it does extend into the technical front yard. Okay. But mm -hmm. all the other fencing that's proposed is is there what Everything else was okay. I yeah, so sure so I'm the um, so kind of the parking lot or parking space uh, screen and buffer areas that is called out in code is supposed to be a five foot wide buffer area with landscaping, but we we allow an exception where you can do three feet wide with this three foot tall fencing. Okay, I thought I read that. I just want to verify that I was understanding that yep, correctly. You okay. got it right. All right, thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, do we have other like, questions for staff? Okay, okay. thank you, Mr. Dorman. Appreciate it. Okay, would the applicant like to please come on up and tell us any other additional information, or we can ask you guys questions. And if you can, just state your name and uh, address for the record, please. The applicant, but I'm the engineer. I'm going to come up there with her. Okay. Yep, okay. absolutely. That's fine. Okay. Is it okay if we had two with both of them up there at the same time? Yes, over to the podium, and then state your name and address for the record. Doing these things since early the rest of it. Okay. Okay. Go ahead, you state your name. My name is uh, Dr. Sushil Karte. I go with the name Dr. Sushil, and uh, I'm a veteran. I was in. Uh, uh, requested by name request to come to the Air Force in 1992. And I was commissioned as a major. Uh, I was a flight surgeon and I was uh, um, head of the occupational medicine uh, at the Wright Patterson Air Force Base and also aerospace medicine. After I got out, and I'm also an ER physician, ER boarded physician, and I have a 33 years of a ER experience. I worked with the Ohio VWC during the workers' comp. Uh, so when I got out of the um, Air Force, I decided to do the occupational medicine for the small companies, like 100, 200 employees who could not afford the uh, medical department, but had a great need of it. And um, uh, Dayton was a very industrial, uh, you know, town. We had a Tokyo Express from Cincinnati all the way to Sydney. And uh, when uh, General Motors pulled out from Dayton, which has the second biggest uh, uh, in employment, besides Detroit, five or six plants were here. Uh, the Webster Street just went down the tube. So I had bought this uh, uh, property um, after I came to here, 
my uh, architect and the engineer at that time, just like Tom, had come down and talked to the TU. And we made sure this is an office building for the medical purpose, and then I bought it. But then, when General Motors pulled down, I had to go back to the ER. And then, uh, since 2006, I've been working with the VA, Veterans Hospital, and last seven, eight years, I've been doing the compensation pension examination, which is nothing but the workers' comp injuries and illnesses. Uh, they are in, especially for the Marines and the Army guys, who are the backbone of our military. And these are the combat vets. And these are the young kids. And they really don't want to come back, and there's a stigma to the compensation pension. They feel like you look fine. Why are you coming in here? But there is a much more to it than, and we're not asking you the handouts. We're just asking what is coming to us. And people need to understand that. And the way the system is very convoluted. And a lot of veterans say, I don't want to go through it. And not with the veterans, the veteran goes, but with that goes the family. And with the family goes the, you know, your society. So I feel like I owe it to myself. So now my focus has changed from occupational medicine for the general industry to mostly for the medical combat military vets. And that's what I'll be doing it. And that's why I need this thing. I thought, I'm 75 years old. I can retire. My kids are well settled. I have grandchildren. But this is a purpose I need to get up in the morning. And I feel like I need to do this thing. And I, I really thank Seth Dorman, you know, when I explained to him. And he said, OK, let's, let's do it. So, and here is Tom. He's going to tell you the technical stuff. <laughs> and uh, here is my stuff. You could, you know, just put it around. So you will get you little info. This was done in 1976. So okay. it's all yours. Okay. Thank Did you. Good job. Right. Um, <coughs> Tom Dusa. I'm um, with Haley Dusa Engineering and Surveying. And, and I was involved in, so far, the site plan. Give and us an address real quick. For excuse me? An address for yourself. It's 270 Regency Ridge. Um, and then it's Dayton uh, 45459. Thanks. Um, <clears throat> Dr. Sushil uh, came to me. A, a lot of this stuff's already been explained, and, and Seth has given a good report uh, that I read. Uh, she, she basically said that uh, she's had this project for a while wasn't able to start it, but now she wanted to get involved with it. And since that time, we've, uh, we've had a zoning change. And so the main goal here was to try to maximize as much parking space as I, as I can. And you guys have already mentioned kind of the obvious, but um, what's up there was really the only thing I could come up with because in addition to spaces, you have aisles and, um, and Really, the only way in any direction you could go is to use um, angled parking um, be because of the 18 foot. But once you do that, you have one way. And once you go in, you, you have to have another way to come out. So I had to come out to the, to the west side of the house. I didn't have an option at that point. But what I was able to do also, to, because of the number of parking spaces, or to maximize, <clears throat> was to um, put um, perpendicular parking in, in two locations to get the number up. <clears throat> and it's been brought up, 90 degree parking by code requires um, uh, 24 foot aisles. And there's no way that's gonna happen. Um, uh, just based on, because the other thing is, and I'm stating the obvious, this was a, a residence, and so the house is there, the yard's there. We're, 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 not, we're just trying to find parking in the green space and still meet the required 12% or 14%. Can, 
green space. And um, the, the, what I had told Seth is I knew that it wasn't meeting the code at that point. And, and, but the fact that we're going to put one-way signs up, they, they can still back out and still head in one direction, but it still requires a variance. So um, other than that, I think everything's been explained, and I'm basically here if there is any more questions, but I think you guys have asked and been answered those questions already. So if there's any more, I'm here to... I just had one. You briefly mentioned the signage. So what kind of signage will you be doing for the, just to show the one way so everybody knows for well, sure? At this point, I was just considering arrows, but um, I'll do whatever, whatever you guys would want to require me to do. If you actually want a physical sign, we, we could put a sign up. But people pay attention to arrows pretty much. And I think if they're, if they, in order for them to get into 90 degree parking, they're going to be crossing over an arrow, so hopefully their memory is enough to tell them that they, even if they backed up and start going that way, they're going to see an arrow coming right at them, so they'll know that they're. So. Yeah, I just was, was curious if you're having signs or just so like arrows on the ground. So yeah, on the, on I, I have them shown up there. They're not full blown drawings, but you okay. can kind of see how Basically, the arrows are there to there. show them how to flow through the through the parking system there. I have one question, um, being not an expert in traffic flow and <laughs> design. When I looked at the plan, the only thing that jumped out at me was that very first angled parking spot. Um, is there enough visibility there and space there to prevent any kind of incident if somebody's entering the facility at the same time that somebody's backing out of that very first parking spot? Um, in my opinion, there is mainly because I don't plan on putting anything uh, that's going to be up high enough. So if they're in that parking spot on an angle, they're going to have a direct view of the people come. You're talking about the people coming in and out of the entrance to the, uh, the property. So as, as you can see, they'll look right across and they'll be able to see. So and, and again, this is all going to be low level speed. So people are going to just have to use common sense. But there should be plenty of visibility issue, or clearances there. I think in some ways it helps it's not right off of Main Street, too, if this is on a side yeah. street right. that they're coming from. So Same that problem, yeah, yeah, it does make it a little bit slower, you're right. Is the entrance to the property, which is also the exit to the property, um, wide enough for entering and exiting at the same time? Yes. Uh -huh. Do you think that it would be big enough to handle any supply trucks or anything that, you know, might be a little bit bigger than a, than a typical... Your vehicle going in there. <clears throat> what I don't have on there is um, any type of loading zone, um, just because of the way the site is. Um, but the, <clears throat> my my experience is those trucks. Are, that's why you have an 18 foot lane. You, I mean, a truck is going to be able to traverse that. That they just won't have any place to really to park. I guess they'll have to work that out. And, Again, this isn't going to be like a, a shopping plaza or anything like that. A lot of traffic flow. People are going to just have to be patient. And Understand that. And, and a lot of uh, de uh, delivery vehicles for medical supplies wouldn't be necessarily anything of any Right. They're probably size. more like vans, vans and stuff like that. Correct. I and, and I think any, any truck driver worth his salt is going to take one look at that. If he can't get in there, he's going to park on the street. Either that or he'll park in one of them parking spaces because they should be wide enough for a van if that's all they got. Absolutely. But I, I just wanted to yeah. raise the question. and. Any other questions from the board? Okay, thank you so much. Appreciate okay, it. Okay, thank you. Okay. Make sure we. Okay, at this time, uh, we can. Op do I hear a motion to open this for public comment? Also move. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 And it doesn't look like we have anybody else from the public here this evening, but um, staff, do you have anything? Staff, do you have anything from the public? I do have a couple. Um, so a gentleman named Billy Woods, he lives on Main Street, uh, a couple properties to the south, and it would be across Hillgrove Avenue. He called in, he lives at 9, 9221 North Main Street. 
He said he has no problems with the variances for the parking lot. Um, Today I received an email from the neighbor on Hillgrove just to the west of the property. Um, her name is uh, Bev uh, Bonensegna, and she said that her and her husband have no issues with the variances so long as they are putting in the privacy section of privacy fence in the front yard. So that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Do I hear a motion to close? I move we close public comments. I'll second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Okay, at this time, do we have any discussion we want to have among board members? Um, any other additional questions? Anything to talk about? I think that was interesting to hear from the property owner that's to the west and that they do, I mean, obviously they want the variance because they would want, I would think you would want that privacy fence there if you're gonna have parking right there. So that in a way makes sense so it's good to hear from them yeah I agree and and the, the screening's important I think um, I can't see where this would be a uh, high traffic area I could see where it would be a consistent traffic area though with time and hopefully as uh, as um, you know the, the business improves perhaps it will be higher and that's not bad so you know it's it's all good um, I don't see any problem with that uh, when it comes to one question about the face uh, the fence there Seth and I'm glad you're standing up here because um, we were looking at the opacity of the fence you know being 50% whereas this is going to be more than that why is that is, is it because of uh, obstructing view for egress of the of the vehicles from the from the property is that the, is that the purpose of the of the I, I think generally because we want front yard fencing and it, not necessarily related to vehicles but we want front yard fencing to be short and decorative um, typically those are going to have less opacity th than a privacy fence um, you know the slats will be separated by a certain distance so okay thank you I, I was just curious about that when yeah, when I, I read it's that just the style yeah. we're looking for mm -hmm. okay thank you mm -hmm. Anything else from the board? Okay, let's go into our findings of fact. We'll go through those, um, make comments about each one. Would anybody like to run through those tonight? Or I will. Let's see. Okay, I will go through our findings of fact. It, so what we do is we'll go through these, um, this list of seven criteria. If we agree or disagree, it doesn't matter. Do, I mean, it matters at the end, but it will not just because we disagree with something does not mean we cannot approve the variances. So just wanna make that note. Okay, so we will uh, go through these findings of facts. Um, start with number one. Special conditions and circumstances exist which are peculiar to the land structure or building involved and which are not applicable to any other land structure or building within the same zoning district. Um, I kind of have to disagree on this just because it is similar to other properties on this as we kind of talked about. Um, however, it's it, with it being a corner lot, it can it is a little bit different on its own. So it's kind of yeah. And I think that's why I was leaning toward agree because because of the corning, the def definition of it being a corner lot, and the way again there's inconsistency with the postal code, um, not agreeing with the way technically our definition of a corner lot is when it comes to the front, the side, the rear. Um, so it's it's peculiar, but it isn't, it isn't topographical. Um, so, you know, it's not like we have a stream running through it or anything along those lines. But we do have, that, that would require placement of, of the building a certain way. However, we do have some special con, uh, conditions um, that are peculiar to the corner lots that would be applicable uh, to any other corner lot, perhaps, along the main street corridor, um, unknown but it could it could be um so I, that, that's how i would kind of look at that i'm, I'm not sure miss weeks no now that you talk yeah no, that we, once i said well, once i said it's corner lot i was like wait yeah let's agree on this one <laughs> i'm glad i was here to clarify that <laughs> thank you good <laughs> all right 
Number two, a literal interpretation of the planning and zoning code would deprive the applicant of rights commonly enjoyed by other property owners in the same zoning district under the same provisions of the planning and zoning code. Uh, this one I would agree. Uh, you know, the literal interpretation of the planning, I mean, in as far as like other zone properties within the zoning district, you know, th this is the Main Street district. The whole point is to be more commercialized and um, so allowing this would. I would agree with that too. Okay, number three, these special conditions and circumstances do not result from the, act the actions of the applicant. I actually somewhat kind of disagree with this because Mr. Dorman did mention that she could do fewer s parking spaces uh, because of the access with the, um, what is that, the access with the tra public transportation? The yeah, with the sidewalk, but w still wants to go ahead and do the 12 spaces, which uh, I, I don't see an issue with, but I just want to put that out there that, you know, because of that, it, I would disagree with number three. I think that's a good point. I agree. Okay, number four, granting the variance requested will provide the minimum necessary relief to alleviate the practical difficulties the applicant is experiencing. Um, I would agree, just because of the size of this law, where you know where they, there's not a lot of places to put these parking spaces, along with same. I mean, and I do think that with the fencing part of the variance, that it needs to be there because of um, the helping out the neighbors that are right next to them. True, and, and as Mr. Dusa um, was, was rather clear about, you know, it, it's uh, it's kind of a shuffling around to try to make the make the property conform to the to the parking that uh, that the code requires. So, you know, I, I can appreciate the difficulty, and it's almost like a uh, Tetris puzzle or something to try to put together. Number five, granting the variance will be in harmony with the general purpose and intent of the planning and zoning code and will not cause damage or harm to the neighborhood or otherwise be detrimental to public health, safety, and welfare. Um, agree with this. I mean, it's, we kind of talked about this is the Main Street Zoning District. You know, this is the, the whole idea is to have it more commercialized. Um, and, you know, by putting up a, the additional privacy fence, that will help with safety and other aspects. I agree, and and the uh, and the access to the property by uh, by customers and and the general public would not be from the main street mm -hmm. corridor, which is a good thing. Um, that would that would allow people enough time to slow down and and get themselves properly oriented to to either access or or exit the uh, the property and not interfere with uh, main street traffic. So uh, I, I agree. Number six. The proposed variance will not constitute a change of zoning district, including a variation in use on the official zoning map. In no case shall the board approve a variance for a use which is not a permitted use in the zoning district in which the land structure or building is located. Agree with this. This does not change anything as far as zoning goes. Agree. Okay, number seven. Other relevant factors that may assist the board in weighing and balancing the public and private benefits and harms to, benefits and harms to determine if the requested relief is necessary, with the exception that no non-conforming use of neighboring lands, structures, or buildings in the same zoning district, and no permitted or non-conforming use of lands, structures, or buildings in this in any other zoning district shall be considered justification for approval of the requested variance. I think we've touched on most of the factors at this point. Um, anything else anybody wants to add on this? Or? I'll just add that um, I think creating the business that um, the doctor wants to create is going to be an asset to the community and in line with what um, the city is trying to do with that area. And I would just like to commend her for seeing a need and designing something that will use your skills to fill that need. So. I think that's great. I totally concur with that, and thank you for your service over time. Yes, thank you. And your and your uh, focus on on continued support. Okay. So based on the above on the above, the application I believe does meet the standard for variance listed in Chapter. 1141.07A4 of the City of Clayton Planning and Zoning Code. So, therefore, at this time, do I hear a motion?
to approve? Or? I'll make a motion we approve. I'll second. Roll call, please. Mr. <coughs> Excuse me, Ms. Weeks? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Hunter? Yes. Mr. Meadwell? Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Your variances have been approved, and good luck with your business, and we appreciate you putting all the time and effort into putting this together. Thank you so much. And again, thank you for your service. Yes, thank you. <laughs> and then do we have any, I guess, the last thing on our agenda? Uh, Peg out of war. Uh, Is this? I'm not sure what you were going to say. Yep, the, uh, right. There'll be a zoning certificate submittal. It will require a staff review, which will include our civil engineer. Um, so we'll need construction drawings for, yes. for the, the parking lot. But that, yeah, okay. That's the next step, yeah. So we won't go through another Correct. Okay. Yep. No new applications. Okay. No, no other applications no. for next time. Okay. Yep. Uh, do I hear a motion to adjourn our meeting? Real quick. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you so much.